The Sega Genesis platform, along with the Mega Drive, has nearly 900 games created for it. Sure, everyone remembers Sonic, Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, and Aladdin, but I want to try out some games that rarely get mentioned. So with that said, let's get started with a game of Blades of Vengeance. This is a side-scrolling slash-em-up where you can choose from one of three different characters. I was immediately drawn to this game because of the slash em hack em up action that it has, not to mention the really cool graphics and music. Well, granted, the music is a little bit uh, catchy and upbeat for a game like this, but it still works. There are treasure chests in the game that when you slash them, you will get some extra bonuses. Honestly, I really don't know what they are, but they look pretty cool. This looks like a really fun game, and I can't believe I've never played it before. Bonkers! This game appears to be based on a Disney cartoon. I kind of remember this one back in the day, but I didn't watch it. I was too busy watching DuckTales, I think. This is a collection of mini games where I guess you play as a cartoon police officer trying to stop the crooks. In this first stage, you're throwing donuts at the enemies trying to stop them from stealing your magic lamp, Mickey ears, and a uh, half-eaten apple. And in another stage, you're driving Spy Hunter style through the streets and trying to trip up the enemy with your oil slick. And here's a stage where we are trying to build a wall to stop this robot from throwing tires at me, I guess. This one kind of reminded me of a reverse version of Oink for the Atari 2600. And then there's this stage, which I had no idea what I was doing here. I think you're supposed to smash the boxes and find the stuff inside, but uh, for some reason I couldn't quite get it to work. I tried everything. I don't know. I'm an idiot. I really thought this game would be a standard side-scrolling platform game, but it was not that at all. One point in its favor, though, I think, is the fact that the graphics look very much like the cartoon. And it's got some nice and interesting sound effects and music. Bugs Bunny in Double Trouble. I didn't know they made a Bugs Bunny game for the Genesis. Really? There's several different stages in the game, and in this first one you're supposed to flip all the signs that show Bugs Bunny on them over to Daffy Duck. I think you can only turn the signs over when Daffy is near you, which is kind of frustrating. And then we have this other stage with the bull where you're supposed to jump up high in the air, collect dynamite, and then blow open the holes in the ground. This is also easier said than done. But once you do, you climb into the hole and um, not sure what you're supposed to do here at this point. I just ended up wandering around in this underground cavern. I really wanted to like this game because I'm a big fan of Bugs Bunny, but I just couldn't get into it. Crossfire. This is an interesting one. It starts off as a top-down shooter where you're blasting enemies with a helicopter. When you progress to the next stage, your helicopter is gigantic and you're basically shooting enemies on the ground. Take that! Yeah! Ooh! Yeah, you like that, huh? Mmm! I mean, these poor guys on the ground don't have any chance against my giant helicopter. Then once your helicopter lands, you can go into the base here and rescue the prisoners. But what's cool is for your special weapon, you can call that helicopter while you're on the ground and have it attack your enemies. I love that part! After that, you can go into the base and rescue the prisoners. And then you basically have to repeat the same shooting stage over again before you reach the end boss, destroy it, and then complete the stage. 
graphics and sounds are pretty good for this game, but I really liked the gameplay in it. It was really fun and really honestly surprised me. I thought it was just going to be a regular top-down shooting game, but it's way more than that. Crewball. Now this is a pinball game. I think it's based on the Motley Crue band somehow or another. Although I don't hear any music from the band, so I'm not really sure what the connection is here. Okay, there's a little bit of Motley Crue music on the title screen, but that's about it. I would have thought a Motley Crue pinball game would have been more, you know, gory, but this one is kind of futuristic. I didn't find this game all that challenging. If you'll notice, there's some times when the ball gets close to the drain and it doesn't even go out. It just sits there. I did this on purpose just to see what would happen. It's very rare that I complain that a game is too easy, but this one definitely was. And as far as I can tell, there's really no way to change the difficulty on it, so you just get easy. I kind of like the futuristic graphics, but overall this game is just incredibly boring. Deadly Moves This is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with a bit of a twist. Instead of fighting on a single plane, you actually have three different planes to battle on. This one has some nicely detailed graphics and animation. I really like this one here with all the dinosaur skeletons and stuff in the background. Also, the line scrolling is just insane. Look how far back it goes. Wow. The stage here isn't quite as graphically impressive. It's just got some color cycling there on the water, but we still have some really cool line scrolling on that raft that we're standing on. And this stage has some nice line scrolling here on the uh, stone floor. Background isn't quite as impressive, but you know, it's okay. The gameplay is not bad, actually. It's pretty fun. Only wish I knew some of the special moves. But I will say playing it on three different planes can be kind of frustrating sometimes, and honestly, it might have been better if it was just on one plane like every other fighting game. Devilish. This is a take on Breakout that I had no idea even appeared on the Genesis. I thought this was only a Game Gear game. It's set in this medieval demonic kind of world where you have this, uh, I guess it's a magic ball, that you bounce against these paddles here at the bottom, which can be adjusted. The top paddle can move up and down and twist left and right. And I guess this is supposed to make it more interesting when you're hitting the magic ball. I don't, I don't really know. It might be better if it was just normal, I don't know. For a breakout style game, this one's got some nice graphics and sounds. And overall, it's a pretty good game, if you like breakout. Double Dribble, the playoff edition. Double Dribble! Oh boy, this game has a lot to live up to after the uh, Nintendo version. Let's see if it's any good, shall we? And right off the bat, I'm not really digging the perspective of the game. It's a little too high up in the air for me. It's like you're sitting in the nosebleed seats trying to play the game. Also, the difficulty is, I don't know, pretty hard, I thought. I know I suck at games, but come on, I can't be that bad. Oh hey, look, I made a basket, yay. I feel the graphics could have been a heck of a lot better, especially for a 16-bit game. I mean, by the looks of it, this game could probably have appeared on the uh, Master System. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who love this game, but I, I'm just not one of them. Earth Defense, or the Earth Defend? This is an unlicensed game for the Genesis slash Mega Drive, and honestly I can see why. It's kind of boring. <laughs> the graphics are really plain and the gameplay is rather dull, much like my commentary. I'm not really sure what the heck is going on here in this part of the game. It's just a mishmash of futuristic graphics or something. I do kind of like the special weapon. It reminds me a little bit of the Fiery Phoenix from the cartoon show Battle of the Planets. 
You know, since this is an unlicensed game, why didn't they just make it a full-on Battle of the Planets game? That would have been awesome. The second stage looks a little bit more interesting with that canyon and the river there. This might be a good game to teach kids how to play shooter games, but other than that, I wouldn't go near it again. Exo Squad. We are the Exo Squad. I understand this game is based on a cartoon, which I have never heard of or seen before. You start the game playing as this blue robot mech, and you're basically just shooting enemies as they're coming in, trying to uh, hit you. I like the graphics in this part of the game. It's pretty cool how the uh, screen kind of tilts sideways, and it's got some pretty cool music to go along with it. Other than shooting the stuff coming at you, I'm really not sure what you're supposed to do here. There's got to be more to it than this, right? And if you somehow survive that, you can get to the side-scrolling action part of the game, where you play as yet a different mech, or what looks like to be a man inside of a mech. Actually, this kind of reminds me of the power loader from Aliens. That just automatically makes this game so much better. I really like the graphics and sounds in this game, and I didn't find the controls to be all that bad. F-15 Strike Eagle. I remember back in the day, there were a lot of flight simulator games for the Atari ST. Many of them by Microprose, the company who made this game, who is also owned by Atari these days. So when I fired this game up, I was kind of actually hoping that it would not be a 3D polygon style game that Microprose is known for, but uh, yeah, it is. The problem is that the Genesis just does not have the horsepower to do a game like this justice. It's just way too slow and cumbersome to play. This is a game that really belongs on a computer, not a console. Final Zone. Here's another mech game, although this one is a little simpler than Exo Squad. Basically, you wander around in a 3D isometric perspective, shooting as many enemies as you can to get to the next part of the game. I want to say that the graphics are nicely detailed, but Honestly, I wish there was a little bit more pizzazz in them. They're kind of boring. Once you defeat enough enemies, you move on to the boss part of the stage, which appears to be in a train tunnel of some kind. The controls are a little bit wonky, and the gameplay is not that great. If you like mech games, you might like this one. High Seas Havoc now take a look at this game for a second and tell me which other classic platform game do you think inspired this one? Could it be Arrow the Acrobat? No. Could it be Bubsy? Oh no, definitely not. What about Mario? No, no, not at all. Oh, I know, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. Clearly this is a Sonic the Hedgehog clone and it's really not too bad actually. The graphics are nice and colorful and the controls are not bad, even though I suck at it. As I was playing the first stage, I started to wonder, why is this game called High Seas Havoc? Wouldn't you want to start somewhere on a ship or something like that? But the ship is the second stage. I didn't really enjoy the ship stage as much because you have to spend a lot of time climbing the masts. And then when I got to the boss, I couldn't figure out how I was supposed to defeat him. I jumped on his head the first time, and after that, probably a hundred more times, and just nothing ever happened. Look at this, I'm just bouncing on his head over and over again. Forever. I know I'm doing something wrong here, so those of you who have played this game, please let me know what it is, so that I can try out the later stages of the game. Because I'm sure I would enjoy this game if I could get just a little bit further. Jerry Glenville's Pigskin Foot Brawl. 
What does Jerry Glanville have to do with this game? Absolutely nothing! This was originally an arcade game by Midway, where your goal is to... Get the ball! Score goals with a football? Honestly, this game is probably more like rugby than football. All you do is grab the ball and try to get it in the opponent's goal, and you know you want to beat them up as much as possible along the way. The graphics do a good approximation of the original arcade. It looks very similar. There's a little bit of music, but it's not too obtrusive. And the voice is pretty good, too. I'm open! Now the gameplay, on the other hand, honestly is a little frustrating. There's always something blocking you, like a tree or a sign, that has nothing to do with the characters in the game. It's bad enough I gotta deal with the opposing team, but to have trees and signs and stuff in my way blocking me, that, uh, that makes it just slightly more annoying. I don't really want to complain about the difficulty in this game because, you know, the goal is to get the ball, so you're constantly going to be attacked by the enemy. But it would be nice if they would give you a slight chance, at least. <laughs> Junction. Oh man, I was afraid this game was going to be like this. I was kind of hoping it would be more like the train game where you have to move the train across different train tracks. Not a ball where you have to uh, move it across a, a movable path. Any kind of slider puzzle game I'm pretty awful at, and pretty much any game that I'm awful at I absolutely detest. <laughs> so this game is no different. I'm really not a big fan of this game. I think what you're supposed to do is get the ball into that pyramid, but when I was playing this I just had no idea what I was doing. But it does have some pleasant music and some decent enough graphics for the style of game. And if this looks like a fun game to you, then give it a try. Marco. I just have the urge to say Polo every time I say Marco. But this game is not called Marco Polo, it's just called Marco. In the game, you play as a soccer kid who loves his soccer ball, who kicks the ball to defeat cats and other enemies. What's very striking to me about this game is the amount of animation in the character. It's crazy. And by crazy, I mean a lot. The foreground graphics are pretty nice, but what's going on with the background? It's extremely pixelated. Music is a little bit cheesy, but I guess that's to be expected with a game like this. This would be a fun game if I could get past the first stage. Minnesota Fats Pool Legend Now I was always a big fan of Side Pocket on the original Nintendo, and I was excited when Side Pocket appeared on the Sega Genesis. Turns out this is the sequel to Side Pocket. There's a couple of different modes that you can play. Story mode, which as far as I can tell, you're just playing pool against other people. Not really sure where it goes after you win because I didn't win, I suck. Or you can play tournament mode where your choices are eight ball, nine ball, one pocket, rotation, or password. Hmm, what's that password mode anyway? There's also the trick shot mode. I thought I could make this first trick shot, but no, I can't quite get it. I'm really glad that I found this game. It's clearly a worthy successor to Side Pocket. Mystical Fighter. Well, that's about as bland of a title for a game I've ever heard. It's a fighting game, and it's mystical. Yeah. It appears this game is based on Japanese mythology. I'm not really sure what gave me that idea. Probably the backgrounds and the characters and that kind of stuff. The background graphics are kind of okay, but really what hurts this game, in my opinion, is the lack of animation. It's like there's only three frames per character. It's kind of boring. Also, the characters repeat over and over and over again. Again, boring. It does have some good sound effects and the music isn't too bad. I especially like the creepy music when you're fighting the boss here. This game is never going to beat Streets of Rage 2, but you know, it's worth playing for a few minutes. Whoa. 
Outlander. I have never played a game that was more like Mad Max than this one. You drive along the road all the while being attacked by motorcycle gangs who are just out to get you. Since this is an EA game, it seems like they use the Road Rash engine, which is fine, except that the uh, frame rate is a little bit low. The graphics are drab, but I guess that kind of fits the theme of the game. What I really love are these little insert scenes where you can shoot at the enemies who are on the sides. Mmm, take that! If you run out of gas, you get to get out of your car and hunt for some. I wasn't able to get too far into this part of the game because it didn't give me a lot of shells. And my health was pretty low. I was only able to get hit twice before I died. This part could be really, really cool if I could last a little bit longer. Controls are a little tough. I always hit the signs on the side of the road. The music really fits the mood of the game too. I wish the frame rate was a little bit better, but overall this game is pretty cool. Ooh, I'm sorry about that, Max. I mean, Outlander. Powerball. This is kind of a futuristic soccer slash rugby slash American football style game. I think these games are really inspired by a game called Speedball by the Bitmap Brothers. I guess that game had a little popularity, so everybody started copying it. But basically in the game, your goal is to get the ball and um, try to get past the opposing team, which is a challenge, not gonna lie. I suck at these games. The graphics are nothing special. The sounds are nothing special. The gameplay is pretty frustrating. Most of these futuristic top-down sporting games just don't do it for me, and this one is no exception. Rings of Power. Ooh, this one's got an interesting uh, opening title screen. Let me guess, this is going to be some kind of an RPG game in the style of Lord of the Rings, maybe? Oh my gosh, what the heck is this? It's like they decided the populous engine needed to be an RPG. What? What, what the heck? I fumbled around for this for a while before I finally figured out how to uh, attack some of these guys. And it's about as boring as it looks. Just moving around in the game is tricky. I mean, look at the control scheme there at the top. It's extremely confusing. Alright, let's fight this Wyvern. Wyvern? 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 I don't know how to say it. Take that, you stupid Wyvern. Yeah. Oh, now it's getting interesting. Here, come on. Take this. Take that. Oh, you got me. You've been killed in battle. Your quest is over. Oh no. I should go play another game now that's much better than this one. Risky Woods. This is a side-scrolling action game with some pretty detailed graphics and sounds, although I will say that the colors are not quite as vibrant as I think they should be. I really enjoyed the gameplay up until I got to this point here where I put the compass here in this statue and then nothing happened. I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do next. This game would have been better if it had just been a straight up action game instead of trying to add puzzles and stuff to it. Todd's Adventures in Slime World. This was originally an Atari Lynx release, and I used to play it on that system a lot. So when I heard there was a Sega Genesis version, I was really surprised. Basically, in the game, you play as Todd on a mission to collect these really valuable gems on the planet of Slime World. But you have two things to worry about. Number one, you have to worry about the enemies, who can kill you pretty quickly. And number two, you have to worry about getting too much slime on you, because if you're too coated in the slime, you will explode. 
Now, strangely enough, there are pools of clean water in Slime World, and uh, you can hop in there and clean yourself off. One of the appeals of this game is that you could do 8-player multiplayer on the Lynx. In this version, I don't know that you could do that many. Probably just two, I think, is the max. The graphics in the game are just a little bit weak, and the sound effects can be very grating on the ears. I've always kind of liked this game, but honestly, I don't really see the appeal of playing it on a console. On a handheld, maybe, but not a console. Super Battleship. This game is not really what I expected at all. I thought I would be getting the classic Battleship game, but this Super Battleship is more of a turn-based strategy game where you really just move your ships around and try to attack the enemy. I did enjoy this first-person perspective scene where you're shooting at the uh, enemy ships. It's kind of cool. But otherwise, I really didn't care for this game. And before you say anything, yes, I am aware that there is a classic Battleship game in here, but I was hoping that the Super in Super Battleship meant that you would get different weapons, much like how Battleship for the Game Boy does it. But no, it's just your basic Battleship game. Fortunately, you are able to shoot three shells at once, which quickens the pace of the game. The Legend of Galahad. This game really looks familiar, and I'm pretty sure I played it on the Atari ST as a game called Leander. And yep, turns out that's exactly what it is. As you can see, it is a side-scrolling action game, and what you have to do here is find the key in order to enter the portal. Now the key is going to be here in this cave. Once you have the key and enter the portal, you can move on to the next stage. The graphics have that very clear European style about it, which is to say very detailed, except for the colors, which are kind of bland. The music is a little chintzy, but the controls are pretty good. Overall, this is a pretty decent game. Thunder Fox. This is a side-scrolling action game where you play as either Thunder or um, Fox. Actually, I don't really know what the story behind this game is, and honestly, I don't really care. I just like, you know, blasting soldiers. That's a lot of fun. You start out with a knife, but you can get different kinds of weapons. Machine guns, flamethrowers, grenades, you know, your standard weapons of war. You can do this really cool jumping backflip. I guess it's good if you're trying to attack this helicopter boss. The graphics are decent enough and it has a few layers of parallax. I noticed the clouds are kind of a uh, fake parallax there though. The sound effects are good, but the music really doesn't have anything going for it. This is a pretty cool game. I really liked it. Virtual Pinball. Ugh, what do we have here? I think this is a Sega Genesis version of Pinball Construction Set, but I'm not really sure. It's extremely, extremely generic. The graphics, as you can see, are completely bland and boring. Here's a stage called Game Pro. I don't know if maybe they were sucking up to Game Pro Magazine for this or what, but it's got their logo in it. Then we have this one called Cash Money. I thought it would have been more like a casino kind of stage, but no. The pre-made pinball tables just aren't that great. I think the primary appeal of this game is that you can build your own pinball tables, but the interface really isn't all that intuitive, and I had no idea what I was doing here. I might have enjoyed it a little bit more if it had been a basic pinball game. Wardener. What we have here is a side-scrolling action game in a fantasy land setting. As you can see, the main character throws fireballs to attack his enemies. 
And speaking of enemies, there are quite a few of them to battle. There's wizards and flying raisins, I guess they are. <laughs> well, flying eyeballs with legs. I'm not really sure what those are. Now I got to this section here and the uh, jumping was a little challenging. Trying to get just the right height so you don't bump into the ceiling. It's pretty easy to die in this game, that's for sure. The graphics aren't too bad, but I sure would like to see some more in the background. It's just black. It's kind of boring. Music is also a little too upbeat for a game like this, I think. It might have been better served if it had a mystical soundtrack. Anyway, this is a pretty fun game. I think you should check it out. Warp Speed. For a game called Warp Speed, this game is actually kind of slow. Basically travel from sector to sector, protecting your star bases and defeating the enemy invaders. The funny thing about this game is that it's called Warp Speed, but I wasn't able to actually enable the warp in the game. I had to travel from sector to sector manually, and that took uh, quite a while. And then once I finally came across some enemies to blast, there just wasn't a whole lot of excitement in the battle. The photons that you shoot are kind of slow and boring. The enemy ships just kind of move around at a very slow pace. And the music is honestly about ready to put me to sleep. I had high hopes for this game, but honestly, it just didn't do it for me. And it's too bad too, because the Genesis could really use a good first person spaceship shooter. Wings of War. I was kind of hoping that this would be related to the game Wizard of War, but no, it's not. This is a side-scrolling shooter game, and it kind of made me think of Legendary Wings for the Nintendo. Because as you can see, your character is a flying wingman, a hawkman kind of character. And I think he's shooting magic here at a very rapid pace. The graphics are a real standout in this game. There's this really cool effect where the whole screen tilts back and forth. It's pretty awesome. The music and sound effects are also superb. Oh, this is a creepy looking boss. But it wasn't too hard to beat, even for me. There's a huge variety of enemies, and as you would expect, there's also some really cool power-ups to increase your firepower. This is a really awesome game. I can't believe it's not more well-known. Alright, well there you have it, 30 Sega Genesis games that have been virtually forgotten. Anyway, which of these did you remember? Please let me know down in the comments. Until then, I want to thank you for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye everyone.